Today's episode explores the purpose of doing dressage. And I'll take a look at it separate from our own human goals and instead talk about the purpose with respect to how it can and actually should benefit the horse. Here we go, episode 34, The Purpose of Dressage. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. On my website, and I'm sure in previous podcasts, I've stated the object of dressage according to the FEI uh, under Article 401. And that object of dressage goes like this. The object of dressage is the development of the horse into a happy athlete through harmonious education, resulting in a horse that's calm, loose, supple, and flexible, but also confident attentive and keen, thus achieving perfect understanding with his rider. I never miss an opportunity to say that out loud because I think it's beautiful. And that really does describe the object, the goal, the end result of doing dressage in such a, such a lovely way. And I love that it's actually in the competition rule book. However, (laughs) that still doesn't tell us why we want to do dressage in the first place. So why might we? To look cool to our friends? Yeah, well, historically speaking, that is one of the purposes of why people did dressage, you know, to show off in to the king, you know, to royalty in, in the court of the king. And another um, reason maybe, you know, for military. Yeah, historically, dressage was part of military maneuvers, but you know, we're not doing that anymore. Yet we still do dressage. So why? Well, dressage can be good for the welfare of the horse when done well. (laughs) I made a video called the purpose of dressage explained in four minutes and 11 seconds. And I will include a link to that in the show notes. Now um, you can find the show notes either on my website, website, dressagenaturally.net slash podcast, and then look for episode 34. Um, You can either go to the episode page, or if you're on the front page of my podcast site, uh, where it lists all the, the episodes in the player, you'll see a thing that says notes. Sometimes wherever you're listening, there might be a button that says details. And if you scroll down, you might be able to find that link, but you can for sure find it on my website. And in that video, I kind of do this cute little drawing. I think it's cute. And it explains the purpose of dressage. And so it shows a happy, happy little horse out in the field, just being a ha- you know, a happy little horse all by himself. And then we have contact with the human. And sometimes when horses first contact humans, I mean, think of, you know, a wild horse. Let's go way back to that. You know, like, oh my gosh, I'm a little worried about this. And the horses can go into a posture of, I'm not sure about this. I'm not okay with this. You know, and think about what that posture might look like, right? Tense back, head up, rear end up in the air, you know, tight muscles, big eyes, things like that. And one of the first things that we need to do is to overcome that so that we can now be together and he's still a happy little camper horse. Well, the same sort of thing happens when we go to ride a horse. Now, hopefully your horse is not afraid of you anymore on the ground and you begin the process of getting them used to being ridden. And even if that process is done well, there's always a moment when you have that first moment in the sa- in the saddle and they feel that weight on their back and some sort of form of dropping their back, tensing their back muscles happens. They spread their feet wide, you know, something like that. And of course, every horse is different. 
And if it's not done well, then the problems are really obvious, right? The horse is tight, tense, exploding, bucking, you know, <laughs> that shouldn't happen during a normal starting first rides process. But even under good circumstances, I want you to really think about, or, you know, if you've observed this, if you've done this, sorry, lots of horses, you've observed this. Um, and if you haven't, then I would tempt you to go watch a horse's first time carrying a rider. Sometimes you'll see it most obviously if you go watch, you know, a big cowboy get on like a little two-year-old quarter horse that they do that all the time. That's a lot of weight with the saddle and the person and this little baby horse. And you'll see some version of dropping back, tightening, sprawling of the legs. And then the, the next job is to overcome that, right? We need to overcome that somehow, but we don't go right to dressage. First, we need to go through a stage of helping the horse now become comfortable again with us on their backs, right? So they were fine without us. Now we get on their back. There's some sort of contortion that happens. And our first job should have them be able to walk, trot, and canter around as if we're not up there and we're we just happen to be sitting on them, riding with loose reins. They didn't need tight reins in order to walk, trot, canter on the lunge line. <laughs> Why should they need them now? Of course, now I say that and there's people who do lunge in side reins and things. To me, that is just not appropriate when you're first starting a horse. They know how to walk, trot, and canter and hold themselves in the wild. We need to just get them to understand and then be able to carry us on their backs in that same natural frame. So we're really just working with them mentally and emotionally to be, hey, I'm okay with this thing on my back and I don't mess with you, you don't mess with me, and we figure out how to balance together. And that's the stage where my instructor always called it comfortable transportation. So even if you have as, you know, aspirations for the Olympics or the World Games, the first goal is just to have comfortable transportation, to be able to get on your horse, have him be okay with you, you're okay with him, you don't have to hold on to him, he doesn't have to hold on to you, and you're just happy campers together. So that's the first step. The purpose of dressage comes in, and I put all that into dressage actually, but the real purpose when dressage kind of stuff, which for me means, you know, posture training, um, that comes in next because if we don't um, start to build the skills to specifically overcome that initial contortion that you saw from fear or not understanding or not being okay with the person on your back or just simply dealing with the weight. We have to overcome that and having comfortable transportation where they're just okay with you will get you so far. It'll, it'll take out the contraction due to fear and confusion, but it still won't resolve the the postural contortions that are due to simply having weight on their backs. You know, there's this long bridge between the shoulders and the, and the haunches, and we're sitting, you know, somewhere along that, and it's going to naturally, gravity is going to make it sag. Take away fear, take away trust and confusion, it's going to come up to a certain point. But how do we bring it bring the back up from there? How do we turn that into this beautiful suspension bridge that's supported, that doesn't sag whenever cars go over it? So that's the purpose of dressage, is to build those specific skills. And when people start horses, if they have a dressage prospect, often, I think, they go to those physical skills a little too soon. So imagine there's a horse who's somewhat untrusting, somewhat confused, a little bit anxious, whatever it is, and they immediately go to, well, side reins, we have to teach the horse to bring his back up, we have to do this, you know, has to be going forward, has to be really pushing, you know, all of these physical kind of things. If we haven't resolved 
the fear, confusion, things like that, then we're, we're now starting out by fighting the body because fear, confusion, feelings of helplessness, boredom, all work against the posture that we're actually trying to end up with in dressage. And this is a mistake that I see happen again and again, too focused on the physical shape too soon. Now, on the other hand, you can't wait too long either. <laughs> so I teach that there's two main categories of unhealthy biomechanics. There's active unhealthy biomechanics and inactive unhealthy biomechanics. So active unhealthy biomechanics happens when you have not resolved the fear or the trust or the communication issues. So you have, you're fighting with the aids, you're fighting against tension, there's contraction in the top line because of all those things. And then you try to physically manipulate the body into the shape that you want when the horse's mental emotional state is actively fighting against that. So that's active unhealthy biomechanics. Any, that's any version of two strong aids, conflicting aids, fighting with the nature of the horse, going to just the physical without addressing the emotional and the mental. But inactive unhealthy biomechanics is when you wait too long. You get that comfortable transportation, happy little camper horse plopping along, and you got you maybe recovered and the posture is improved from anxious, confused, not sure, whatever, and you've gotten it to just kind of okay. They're happy carrying you, you're happy riding them, but you're just on that edge, right? So then any kind of challenge or strain, they don't know how to deal with it. So they're going to default to contraction and poor biomechanics because they don't have, they haven't built that skill to carry you. So this is where dressage really comes in and says, how do we help the horse strengthen um, in a way that they use their core muscles to really support the rider using their postural muscles. Those muscles are designed to carry for long periods of time, right? So you want your horse to be a back mover. They're moving their back. And the only way they can move their back and use those core muscles is if they're balanced. So you want a horse that's balanced, so free in their movement, able to carry you, able to get the hind legs underneath those powerful hindquarters to carry themselves so that they're not just unathletically plopping along on the forehand, pounding those navicular bones and getting suspensory injuries. <laughs> All right. So the, the, for me, the purpose of dressage is to help the horse recover mentally, emotionally, and physically to the burden of carrying us. And I put mental emotional in there too, because I know that the foundational partnership stuff <laughs> that I do, even though you could separate that into, oh, that's horsemanship. For me, my goal is dressage. And I know I cannot do dressage without that stuff. So for me, everything I do is pointing me towards my goal of dressage. So many people think of dressage as just the physical stuff, just the movements, just the shape of the body, but you, you can't go far, or if you have gone far, you, you're, you're lucky, <laughs> but you will meet a horse that's going to need you to see the whole picture. And that's why in the, the course that I have called the finding the sweet spot of healthy biomechanics. I mean, that was the first course that I made and it's, it's the most important one because it really envelops the partnership, the biomechanics, and then moving into gymnastics because you can't, for me, you can't separate it. So when I sat down to make a course and I thought, all right, how am I going to create a course for, for doing dressage in this way of welfare that will speak to an advanced rider who maybe has come up against a challenging horse, also talking to uh, maybe someone who's never done dressage at all, 
maybe they're do they do raining or jumping or even driving, you know, something like that, something completely different. And they want to learn dressage. So the first two modules of the Sweet Spot course are the foundation. It's all about building the trust and the communication that you're going to need and, and the very specific communication in order to influence posture. But I couldn't do a dressage course without the partnership and that kind of communication and trust built in. And then moving into module three, we start building in the motivation. We put it together and then we find, okay, how do we do some exercises that will start to affect the horse's posture and way of going, but in a way that motivates the horse to participate in the exercises. Now, how can you even have a horse participating? I mean, participating isn't just okay, they're doing it because I said so. <laughs> I mean, there's a certain degree of that for sure in training. You know, that's the job of training. Hey, when I say this, you do this and we understand each other. But even beyond that, there's another layer because of this idea that dressage should be for the horse. If it should build the skills that help the horse carry us in at minimal pain-free, you know, let's, let's make sure we're not, you know, stressing the body because they're so crooked or unbalanced or plopping on the forehand. So not only just taking them out of pain, but then building the skills that and allow them to move with more ease. And in doing that, sometimes you'll find the horse moves even better than they ever did without us. And that's the part of dressage that I love because the horses feel this and you can have a average moving horse moving their, you know, natural best. And maybe they, you know, move for a six out in the pasture and then we get on them and they probably move for a five for a little bit when they first start being ridden because of the burden of carrying us. And then after we do the foundation partnership and we get rid of all the things that might be causing them confusion or fear, then they might move back for a six again. But then we start doing dressage and they move for a seven or an eight or a nine. You know, and I'm just using dressage scoring numbers, but it's just, that's the idea. You know, more freedom, more balance, more alignment, more of all these things. And, and this crazy idea that things like balance and moving freely with more power should feel good to the horse. <laughs> so not just to us, look at me on my fancy horse, but it should feel good to the horse. And I think this is probably why I enjoy working. I, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the underdog. I love working with any kind of moving horse. And I think sometimes the more average moving horses, um, when, when you align them and you work with them in this way and they participate in the process and they're like, Oh, right here, this is where I feel good. And they start to get that power and get that freedom. They're somehow, I think more appreciative because <laughs> they can really feel the difference. And sometimes the, you know, fancier and more well-bred the horses, like they don't appreciate that as much. And I think sometimes those fancy horses, you can cruise for a longer time without them really having to apply themselves. And then sometimes they get stressed out in the upper levels because they've been kind of cruising on their good looks. And now, uh-oh, we're at fourth level and we've got to really, really be together. And now all of a sudden it gets harder where the more average or just less extravagant movers usually have some sort of little issue and you have to get them more free and you have to get them more balanced. And then when they feel that they will associate that, oh my God, I'm like the king of the world kind of horse in association with the communication with you. And that's the kind of pride and uh, exuberance that, you know, for my horses, that they meet me in my, in my grooming stall, you know, and if it's their day off, they get it, they get jealous and they want to come and do it some more. And they just feel like 
that power. So that's, I really enjoy focusing on that purpose of dressage. It's not about, come on, let's get the basics done so we can get to the fancy stuff. You know, fancy stuff is fun too. But I love feeling horses open. There's something about that openness when they realize like, okay, that was weird, but oh, I feel better now, <laughs> you know? And so much of the dressage basics can be like that. If you, you know, I work with a lot of horses that, um, student horses, they've been crooked for a while or they've been unbalanced for a while. And I just love that feeling when we start doing some of these basic exercises that the module three, <laughs> when we start putting some things together and they're like, okay, this is weird. Okay, this is weird. Why are you doing that? Why are you asking me to go sideways? And then they go, ooh, I feel good. Can you move my shoulder a couple more times? Because I feel amazing now. <laughs> so for me, that is the purpose of dressage, to give the horses some possibilities and to play with them in a way that we do these exercises where they participate. We're, we're all looking together for the place where the horse says, that feels easier to move right there. What you just did there, that helped me. We're looking for how we can help them. And so the, the whole idea of the sweet spot is to move, to get enough for the partnership, to have comfortable transportation, happy little campers, moving into these exercises that work with the horse to find the place of ease. So the sweet spot just means that just right moment where the horse is moving as freely as he can that day. And it takes, um, it's a place of ease. It should not take a lot of aids to support or hold it together. It's a, it's a place of ease. The rider's in active neutral and the horse, the horse is in their best spot and they can sustain that together, working together. And then the next stage is then doing that same protocol for balance and posture with the rider, right? If it works for the horse, it's going to work for the rider. So developing those core muscles and finding that sweet spot of the rider position in the same way that you're not, you know, saying, get your shoulders back, hold on, get your heels down, you know, not that kind, <laughs> but building self-awareness, learning how to experiment, learning how to train your attention to different parts of your body and then practicing so it sustains. And then once we have that, we deal with connection with the reins. And this is another part, you know, the purpose of dressage. So many people go for a dressage lesson. The very first thing is get your horse on the bit, shorten your reins. <laughs> and for me, just to keep describing it in those modules, I think that that helps just to kind of give, it's a prioritization, right? So every trainer has a different way of prioritizing which elements do they put in first? So you're hearing my prioritization. I want to do dressage. Okay. How's your partnership? How's the trust communication motivation? Can we work with the horse to find the place of ease? Can you do that in your body? Okay, great. Now we'll look at the contact in the reins because the contact in the reins is not going to be any better than the mental, emotional state and the balance of the horse. And by just waiting a little bit before putting your horse on the bit, you're actually going to solve so many contact issues. So by the time we get in the sweet spot where everybody's like, Oh, this feels good. My horse is stretching and free and moving and look, I don't need any aids <laughs> to keep it there. Now we can connect and hold hands with our horse and start to get refined connection. And then we have our working gates where the horses pull high, carrying themselves and stretchable and the rider can find a sweet spot in ease and active neutral doing just what they need to embody, confirm and allow what they ask the horse to do and not a drop of extra tension. Now we do gymnastic movements, which most people would say, okay, that's where dressage starts. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of steps that I put in before we'd start doing what most people would say dressage is. But for me, I can't separate it. I can't just go right to, okay, on the bit, leg heels. <laughs> There's so many steps in before that are crucial to that part working. Because the idea is you have that sweet spot that we just found together. 
that the horse agrees feels good. And we, and that's the part that we, um, make more engaged or even more supple or even more straight. So we build that sweet spot. Dressage is not about do miles of leg yields and shoulder ins. So hopefully they end up good. No, we, we're, we have to have a certain degree of good enough first. And then we scientifically, consistently with great thought, apply gymnastic movements that will weak, that will strengthen the weak parts, supple the stiff parts and engage, you know, the parts that are plopping on the forehand. <laughs> and there's a science to that. And there's three categories of gymnastic movements, all which have different cause and effects. There's, there's um, exercises for flexibility that create suppleness. There's mobility exercises that create straightness. And then there's um, collectability exercises that create engagement and carrying weight on the hind end. And so that's module six. So in my Finding the Sweet Spot course, we start with foundation, we end with gymnastics. So it's not till module six that we're doing that but it's like light years different. So the advanced riders that go through this kind of protocol and go through this kind of prioritization, find, you know, they came in with, oh, I'm, you know, having trouble with my half passes and my contact with this particular horse. And by the time we start doing that in the course, they're like, oh, problem's not even there anymore. <laughs> so, so as you're listening to this, um, think about, you know, why do you do dressage? Remember I started out at the beginning in the intro to this saying, we're going to separate the purpose of dressage from our goals. And we're going to think about what's in it for the horse. So it's a good exercise to every now and then step back, step back, step back at the big picture. Why do you do dressage? And it's perfectly okay if you're like hey i want to compete i want to win i want to be you know i want to end up competing internationally whatever it is that's fine but we have to look at what's in it for the horse and you i think it's important to layer on your goals whatever they may be you have to layer on on top you can't forget the original purpose of dressage for the horse because maybe this is the 10th hundredth thousandth horse horse that you've trained and you started out because dressage was beautiful and you loved your horse right maybe you had a very special horse and you loved him and he ended up doing dressage that's what i did i just had a horse <laughs> and then i ended up doing dressage and i loved dressage and so together we did dressage and then i became a professional and i've trained lots of horses to high levels now but i still remember why I do dressage because I felt how it helped that first horse that I did, did dressage with. It helped him. He felt proud of himself. I felt us overcome challenges and come out the other side. I felt him take over during tempi changes and just finish them himself <laughs> when I messed up. I saw him doing canter pirouettes in the pasture instead of falling down in the corners on a muddy day. So I remember what dressage did for that horse mentally, emotionally, and physically. And I can't forget that even though now I'm like, oh, well, you know, of course now I'm just, I'm focused on the Olympics. So this horse that I'm buying, he needs, it's just dressage for the Olympics. Because if that's the thousandth, thousandth horse that you've trained, guess what? That's the first time he's doing it. Maybe he's had lots of trainers, but every horse just has one training process, right? They start, they're not ridden, then they're ridden, and then they get trained. He only has one life. You've maybe worked with a lot of lives, but that horse just has one life. He has one experience. This is his experience. And sometimes I feel sorry for the horses who have a big expectation of them, but it doesn't have to be. It's totally possible to have high level goals and never forget why are you doing this in the first place? 
Everything you do in the beginning of dressage is for the horse. Everything from, everything really through third level in United States um, levels. So, um, you know, shoulder in, haunches in, half passes, simple changes, flying changes, extensions. All of that can help any horse. Going to third level can help any horse of any discipline. It helps them be more functional. It's for the horse. Anything fourth level or above, come on, that that's that's for you. <laughs> that's for the human. Not to say horses can't feel good about it. I mean, I get a horse, my horse Ovation, he's more enthusiastic about being ridden now now that he's, you know, schooling upper, upper levels than he ever was at first level, <laughs> you know, now it's interesting to him, you know, so that's possible, but really all that fancy stuff, that's for you. That is a gift that the horse is giving you. He does not owe you that. That's up to you to earn that. All the lower level of dressage should be, I think, I hate the word should, but in my mind, the lower levels, levels of dressage are a gift that we can give to our horses. So for me, that is the purpose of dressage. And I, I hope that makes you think about it a little bit more. If you're just starting out, I'd love, I mean, how wonderful if every dressage, every, every student who's learning dressage came into it with that attitude of, I'm, I want to build my horse's skills. I want him to carry me in a more efficient, effective, pain-free, powerful, proud way. How many, how many, um, you know, less than desirable dressage teachers, you know, the bad ones could, could go out of business if the, if the student knew coming in, if they listened to this and went, dressage is supposed to be for the horse. He's supposed to make, it's supposed to make the horse feel more proud and more free and more beautiful and more happy and more comfortable. And then when they go to a lesson, it's like, get them on the bit. Your horse is your business partner. Don't let them be like, you know, hopefully they'll be like, wait, <laughs> that's not what dressage is supposed to be like. And they'll put those kind of trainers right out of business. That's my dream. And they'll better be able to find the ones who are working with the horse in a cooperative way and then can go on. And if you give the horse enough of a gift in the beginning, then maybe they'll give you some gifts to go up the levels if you do it well. So is your horse starting out comfortable transportation? Have you done that step? Is he mentally and emotionally with you? Does he agree that it's kind of cool to be ridden by you? and he's okay with it. If not, start there. <laughs> Go back, deal with that. If he is, great. Then it's time to help him find that place of freedom and ease. A place that you both can agree on and that you'll work together to find it because bodies will seek harmony if given the possibility. And that's, that's the main premise in, in dressage naturally, in the protocol for finding the sweet spot of healthy biomechanics. Bodies will seek harmony if given the possibility. So let's set ourselves up to find that. All right, let me know what you think. Come over to Dressage Naturally Land Facebook group. Leave a comment. Let me know after you listen to this. I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, bye.